I had been holding a secret, at least one, for so long that when this came out, I was like exposed. The money stuff was gone. I felt so vulnerable. Literally like three weeks later, I started intriguing with this guy and then it turned into an affair. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty sizzling to perfection? It's time to cheer for Egg McMuffin and fresh cracked eggs at McDonald's. It's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest-to-goodness morning meal. Breakfast, it's on at McDonald's. Now get any breakfast sandwich for just 2 bucks. Available only through the app. Mobile order and pay available at participating McDonald's. McD app download and registration required. Welcome to the Secret Life Podcast. Tell me your secret. I'll tell you mine. Sometimes you have to go through the darkness to reach the light. That's what I did. After 12 years of recovery and sex and love addiction, I finally found my soulmate, myself. Please join me in my novel, Secret Life of a Hollywood Sex and Love Addict, a four-time bestseller on Amazon. It's a brutal, honest, raw, gnarly ride, but hilarious at the same time. Check it out now on Amazon. Welcome to the Secret Life Podcast. I'm Brianne davis Gant. Today, I'm pulling back the curtains of all kinds of human secrets. We'll hear about what people are hiding from themselves or others. You know, those deep, dark secrets you probably want to take to your grave? Are those lighter, funnier secrets that are just plain embarrassing? You know, the how, what, when, where, and why of it all. Today, I have a special, special guest. This is a follow-up episode, which we rarely do. I think we've only done one, but her episode opened so many people's eyes that then she told me there was another secret behind it. And I was like, please come back on and share. So here we go. Our guest today is Lindsay from episode 77. Dun, dun, dun. What is your secret? Well, um, how do I even word it? I um, had an affair and I rediscovered a um, repressed memory from my youth. And through all of that, I've kind of discovered that I have some sex and love addiction. Ooh, okay, but let's go back. So the last time that was that, yeah. Like, but that's the thing. Like when you uncover one thing, usually other things are revealed. Yes. So you were going through, you know, the credit card purchasing, going to Target, getting that sweater when you really didn't need it, or dress or shirt, or going to get a Starbucks when you knew you didn't have the money in the account. So when you were going through that with your credit card, your debting that we talked about on the last episode, then underneath that was the affair going on? Kind of. So okay. yeah, the credit card stuff um, has been going on for a really long time. Like I said, it started in high school. Um, it progressively got worse and worse. And it was December of last year. So almost a year ago mm -hmm. that all of the money stuff came out. Yeah. And the way I see it now is that I had been holding a secret, at least one for so long that when this came out, I was like exposed. Yeah. The money stuff was gone. I felt so vulnerable. And I like immediately went to the next thing. So subconsciously and literally like three weeks later, I started, I guess you would say like flirting and intriguing with this guy. And then it turned into an affair and it was short and it wasn't even physical. Um, we kissed. It was like purely emotional, which is, which is even more difficult sometimes when it's the emotional affair than different than the physical affair. And I feel yeah. like a lot of people have emotional affairs and don't even consider them affairs. Like affairs, they have a yeah. close friend that they turn to that's the sex they're attracted to, or they flirt with people and just like are always like, that's mm -hmm. my personality. So right. I feel like people write off emotional affairs more than the physical, but I, f I know that they're more damaging. Yeah. I mean, I was sharing myself mm -hmm. and my time with 
another person that wasn't my husband. Yeah. And I mean, now it's so crazy to even like look back and think about because I mean, I knew the person, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like a stranger, like a coworker. It was someone who I've known for a really long time. Mm-hmm. Mm, one of my best friend's brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like real messy. Um, and so I knew him. So there wasn't a lot of like get to know you first, but it and it moved so fast. Yeah. From they like do. talking about the past, flirting, texting to like full on madly in love with you, like craziness. And to think about that now, I'm like, what was I doing? Insanity, right? That is nuts. I know. And I don't think people understand how you project this fantasy. Like Mm -hmm. you, cause you were in so much pain and looking at your, your money, then you transferred. So you didn't have to feel that onto this other person that it wasn't even real. And you fall yeah. into this thing where it's like you're flirting and then it speeds up so fast. Yep. And the thing, I mean, the the justification at the time, because the ha- having something else that was a secret was all subconscious, right? After the money. And the justification was that things were really hard with my marriage and yeah. we weren't really communicating. My husband was um, miserable and grumpy all the time and Mm -hmm. like, didn't act like he wanted to be around. Um, and so the justification was I'm unhappy in my marriage and it's all my husband's fault. And so it makes sense that I would have an affair. Like I, I was lonely. I was this, I was that. Yeah. It all makes sense. And you want to feel good about yourself though. Yeah. Yeah. It's when you are going through something where trauma is coming out, all that stuff is coming out. You reach for something that makes you feel good. And if your marriage and your home life is already in shatters, a part of you is like, well, I got to have a backup plan or I got to mm-hmm. like find somebody else. We're not meant to be because we're, we're struggling. And it's like, no, you're struggling and you stay in the struggle because that other mm-hmm. person, you're probably going to have the same issues with them. At least I did. Every time I went to somebody else, the same things came with me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he, I mean, he was married too. So it oh. wasn't even, did you know his wife? Yes. I did. You, girl, you can't tell me anything I haven't I, done, said, or <laughs> almost done, or know somebody that's done. So don't, and nothing is like off limits. Like I've been there, done that, almost done that. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, and like looking back on it now, it's uh, how it all ties together. And, and what I know now of why is wild. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in it, we were lying to our significant others. Mm-hmm. We were lying to his sister, who was my best friend, um, because his wife found out that we'd been texting and was like, what? Like, this is weird. And so we like blew it off. She got very uncomfortable with it. And we made it seem like she was the one that was being crazy, like, crazy. And at the same time, I was like talking to her a little bit to try and like smooth it and like cover it up. Mm -hmm. while I was like, what? Oh my gosh. Just the person that I was is not cute, but it wasn't you. Okay. Here's the thing. If anybody's listening out there, having an emotional affair, there's always something underneath it. It wasn't you. You were in pain. You were not wanting to deal with your pain and the difficulty of communication in a marriage about money. So you just went to something else where you didn't have to feel it. And you could live in fantasy. So give yourself a break. Like it's Uh, hard. uh, (laughs) uh, Yes, 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 yes. You're like, this is too hard, Brianne. I don't want to give myself a break, but I'm being truthfully (laughs) honest. We do the best we can with what we have. Right. Yeah. And that it was, um, it was before I started in DA too. I didn't start in DA. Like the money stuff came out. I, you know, had my little relapse that wasn't even really a relapse because I hadn't done anything differently yet. Um, but, and I was just, you know, poor me, I'm the victim. 
Somebody um, understands me. Nobody, nobody, nobody loves gets me. it. Everybody's so hard on me. Um, you know, just, just doing the whole act that I've been doing my whole life, um, of manipulating people. When I finally decided, when the affair came out, it basically blew up because his wife found out she found messages. Okay. And he told me that she'd found them. So I was like, oh shit. The um, shit is about to hit yeah, the fan. Like there's no way out of this. <laughs> At least you had a warning. I did. I did. Uh, people God, are like, Brianne, you're horrible. <laughs> you're horrible. But I'm like, At least you had a warning. People usually get caught and there's no warning. So you had like the warning. Yeah. Still not great, but still. No, no. And I had, so I told my husband that night, um, I, I did try to sugarcoat it and make it not sound as bad. Okay. Um, and he was very gracious and, you know, kind, but then a couple of days later, she, the wife sent my husband the messages mm. and that's when I really had to like, give it up. How was that, um, confrontation confront? <laughs> It was really hard because I didn't know, like he got the messages and I didn't know that. Um, and he was obviously very angry and hurt. Um, and he pretty much was like, tell me everything. And if you don't, I'm, you know, filing the divorce papers. And I remember so clearly sitting on the couch, he was standing on the stairs and I, you know, my head was spinning and it was like, okay, I can either try and like manipulate him again and like feel bad and like cry and like do the whole thing to make him take back what he's saying and to avoid having to tell him the whole story. Mm -hmm. Or I can say, sure, file the divorce papers because I don't want to tell him. Right. Or I can just freaking tell him and get it all out be done with it, like at least sharing it and stay in this moment in this marriage and fight because he's what I care about. And it was in that moment that I was like, oh my God, this is the person that I love. Yeah. And I can't believe that I've done this. Yeah. It's that surrender. It's that addict mind is trying to find a way out that you're like, I can take this road, this road, or this road. And it's just like, just surrender. Yeah. Because and let the chips fall where they may, because there's something about taking accountability and telling the truth and not having those secrets anymore that really help a marriage grow stronger. That's the only mm -hmm. way. It was so hard. Um, yeah. And I mean, he wanted to see like all of the messages and I guess he, for some reason, thought that I had like a secret phone and she told him that and I didn't mm -hmm. like, he didn't believe anything I was saying at this point. I just had all the money stuff. And then this, like, he didn't believe anything. I don't have any leg to stand on. I just have to be honest mm -hmm. and not get defensive and just like, let it out, let it all out. And he, how he feels is valid because I have done a lot of bad stuff to him. And um, yeah, so it was hard, but really, really hard. Yeah. But now we are stronger as a couple and as parents because we have a child um, than like even when we met. Yeah, and that's the thing. And, and I work with like couples and saying like, you're going to go and do this to somebody else, or you're going to pick somebody that's unavailable because you, a part of you are unavailable and he picked you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there's always like both sides have a part, but it's like, are you willing to walk with each other to get better instead of running away and trying with somebody else, which right. never works out. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I love that you guys stuck it out. How difficult was that? Did it take a long time for him to build trust or you to like not have a secret? Because for me, it was hard for me to tell the whole truth because my whole life I've told half truths because I right. was afraid I was going to get in trouble because I did get in trouble when I told old whole truths. Right. Um, I think at that point, I, I kind of knew like whole truths was the only the Option. only way, mm -hmm. um, because I'd done the half truth like so, so many times in just those last two months. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So I knew, and especially like once I started NDA and once I started going to um, my therapist who I'm still seeing now every week and, you know, communicating about money and really committing to that Mm -hmm. communication and honesty, there was still times where, you know, he would get suspicious of something or like his inner voice would be telling him that like I was lying or doing something wrong. And so he'd like, you know, pick something. Like I remember one day I was in a DA meeting. It was one of my very first meetings. Mm -hmm. And when I finished the meeting, I came down, I told him how the meeting went. And then I like moved on to something else. I was like, oh, hey, so-and-so wants to do this thing tomorrow. And his first thought was, um, this came up right after the meeting. That must mean she was texting during the meeting and she wasn't paying attention and she's not committed and she doesn't care. And she's not doing what she says she's doing. Ah. And so he went through my phone and realized that that wasn't true, but he didn't, he didn't want to say like, sorry, I, you know, let my mind get the best of me. So there was a lot of stuff like that that happened. Yeah. Yeah. And it's trauma for him. That's like PTSD. When you're betrayed by your, your partner, there's a process your partner has to go through also to heal because they never know, is this the the whole truth? Are they really, is is it like sugarcoating, like you said, or it's a whole process. So I believe it takes a very long time to heal, especially as a couple. Yeah. Are you guys still healing today? Like, do things come up? Um, not as much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's just, I mean, it's partly because I tried, I tried really hard and I think I did, uh, to let him have those moments and like, just know that it's part of the process mm-hmm. and not get mad or upset by it. Why don't you trust me? Oh, wait, I know why you don't trust me. Uh, (laughs) um, So I tried and I know there was a few times where I did not do a good job and I did get defensive because I really felt like I'm I'm showing you, you know, Um, but that's what it was. It was showing him. I had to show him. I couldn't just say it. I had to do it. And, you know, just being really open and communicating about money and communicating about my feelings and like when I was feeling something and like being open to him looking at my phone if he wanted to, because that's what he needed to do to heal. I think that all of that helped. Yeah. We also went to couples therapy, which helps. Yeah. Because it gave us that safe space to both be honest. And I mean, we had a lot of stuff even just not including the affair that we had to work through. Um, Yeah, because underneath the affair, there's all these issues you're not dealing with. Somebody mm -hmm. just doesn't go out and just have a random affair. Something else is going on. (laughs) Something else is going on. Each person is not living in the reality of what's actually occurring. And they're sweeping things under the rug and not wanting to completely communicate. And and as an addict, if that's happening, we're like, peace out. I'm going to like, search where it's actually euphoria and pleasant. Yeah. I mean, the couples therapy helped a lot. And then we each, what we realized is we have to do the work together, but we also have to each do our own work. Yeah. And we have to kind of, we have, we need to communicate. We need to talk about how we're doing, what we're feeling, what we're going through, but we also need to give each other the space to like have our own time and thoughts. Um, and so by doing that and giving each other permission to do that, it helped a whole lot. And then we just, you know, made a commitment to like do a date night once a week. And it wasn't like go out and have a nice fancy dinner. It was to like, you know, stay home and do some crazy like couples challenge or something just like fun to just be together and have fun. Oh, I love that. Staples helps small businesses print big. The print advisors at Staples sweat the details and quality of every project. That's what they call their print big promise. They're committed to getting your print job right every time, to treating your small business like a big deal and making it come to life, and to giving you expert guidance from start to finish. And now get 20% off signs, banners, and posters when you spend $75 or more at Staples. Offer ends January 1st. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty sizzling to perfection? It's time to cheer for Egg McMuffin and fresh cracked eggs at McDonald's. It's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest-to-goodness morning meal. Breakfast, it's on at McDonald's. 
Now get any breakfast sandwich for just two bucks. Available only through the app. Mobile order and pay available at participating McDonald's. McD app download and registration required. I did have a question. What do you think started first? Did you think it was the money addiction or do you think it's the sex and love addiction that started first for you? I think that they kind of started around the same time um, because, well, so some of the money stuff was just, you know, what I saw and my environment growing up, like with my dad and stuff. So there was a little bit of that already just from the way I was brought up, um, which you talk about in the other episode. So if you yes. didn't listen to that, go back and listen to the other episode. <laughs> so I think there was some of that, that I was kind of like predisposed to, but it also, um, turned into a bigger problem because of the whole, like covering up feelings, things that we talked about. Yeah. Um, and that's where the like repressed memory kind of all comes ties into all of this. Yeah. Um, you were talking about that after, after we recorded the other episode that you're during a therapy session, a memory came up for you. Yeah, it actually, um, and I don't, I mean, that would be like an entire other episode, the way that it, that memory came back. But, um, basically once I started doing the work and like all the secrets were gone, mm-hmm. there was nothing else that I was so worried about ha- covering up and hiding that it just like allowed the space for this memory to come back. And it came back in very strange ways and like like little pieces. Um, just like, um, well, so (laughs) I'm spirituality obviously is a huge part of 12 step. Um, my spirituality is more like in the universe and like, um, you know, I do a lot of God. You don't use the word God. No. Yeah. I do. I do like crystals and essential oils and like tarot cards, like that kind of stuff. Um, and so, (laughs) um, it was actually during a a tarot card reading, but I was doing some like, yeah, a number came up like a lot of times. And I was like, why is this number coming up? And then I had like, and it was actually a reading I was doing for someone else. No. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So this number came up a ton of times. Okay. Then this visual, um, that like this full on movie came Uh And I was like, oh my gosh, this is really dark. And so I like expressed it to the person and like, did something happen? And they were like, no, nothing like that They're like, what are you talking about, lady? (laughs) I was like, okay. Uh Um, So I was just like perplexed by it for a while. And then I think it was the next day. I just had this like, you know, when your like gut just like tells you something, it just like pops into your head. Um, This camp that I'd gone to when I was 13 or 14. Um, the name of the camp popped in my head and I was like, what the hell? So I Googled it. The number was all over the address. Um, it was like the street, like the number of the street and the zip code. And it was actually in the phone number a lot too. So I was like, um, okay, that's really weird. And then I realized that this visual light had for this other person was a summer camp. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like, oh, wait, some of the things that I saw were this camp. And I was like, what is happening? Like, why is this, why is this camp coming in? And did you never know about this camp or anything like that? Like I knew about the camp. Like I remember that I went to camp that year before I started high school, but it was just like, I don't know, nothing significant. Like you go to camp, yeah, you know, um, I hadn't really thought about it. And I probably, if you'd asked like, what camp did you go to before high school? I wouldn't have remembered the name, but it literally just popped into my head and something told me to Google it. And so it did. Um, And then I think it was the next day after that being like, why, why is this camp coming up? And kind of like meditating on that of like, what's happening Mm -hmm. that I was driving to work. Some song came on. I can't even tell you. It was like a country song, nothing (laughs) significant (laughs) at all. Uh And all of the visuals just flooded in of what happened. (gasps) And, um, I was like, Oh my gosh. And that it was like in that moment that it all came back. I also kind of processed it and had like a full on breakdown in my car. Um, 
And I mean, basically what I'd repressed was that I was sexually assaulted when I was 14 at the summer camp by an older camper. And I remembered his name. I could see his face, like all of it. Wow. It's, it is so fascinating what our brain does to protect us from trauma. Cause yep. I've had repressed memories, like blackout memories. Like I can't mm-hmm. remember. I'm like, I remember the leaves. I remember laying down in the leaves, but I don't, I, everything else goes to black and it's like our yep. mind protects us so we can be survive. And then when you're in a place of healing, it just all comes flooding back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once it did come back and I was like, oh my gosh, okay. I was sexually assaulted when I was 14 at this camp. And so then I started to think about it more and think about like what I remembered and like what I t- told people and, and, you know, spending time with it in therapy and, and just time myself thinking about it. I realized that there was time, and this is really strange, but there was times throughout the years where I would kind of like have a thought that mm-hmm. this happened to me. Like somebody would talk about um, a situation that they, they, they were sexually abused. They were, you know, raped, whatever. And yeah. I would have this like thought of like, oh, that happened to me. But then I would stop myself and be like, that didn't happen to you. What kind of sick person are you that you would like make something up like that? Right. So I would have moments where I would think of it sort of, but then I would be like, why am I making up that this happened? And that, that like added into all of my like addictive behaviors and manipulation and lies, because I was like, I'm obviously a super sick, fucked up person. If I'm like making up this and it just kind of like added to like who I thought I was and who I was being. Mm. And when you were working on this with your therapist, was it, did it go like layers of grief or did you just like explode? You said you had a breakdown and my therapist always says a breakdown is a breakthrough. Yeah. Did it take time to get to the other side, like to fully release it? Are you still feeling it today? Like talk us through that because nobody talks about that. How you feel from past sexual assault or trauma. Yeah. So the moment in the car, I mean, I was by myself. And so I think I, you know, I wasn't feeling any sort of like having to perform or like, you know, be with any, another person. And so it just kind of like all came out. Yeah. Um, and then in therapy, I'd literally been in therapy two weeks when this came up. So I was like, okay, so there's another thing that we have to talk about therapist. Right. Um, And I told him that it all happened. And I was very emotionless when I told him for the first time. Did you feel disconnected? Yeah. It was like factual. This thing happened to me. He gave me two assignments. He had me write a letter to my mom. What I would have said to her right after I got back from camp, had I, you know, like remembered or had I told her, like write a letter to your mom. And in doing that, is when I really like processed and, you know, had a lot of the grief Mm -hmm. grieving process because I didn't tell her, I didn't tell anyone or the, so, and, and I, I guess I would say that I am still sort of processing it because after, after I remembered it and, um, I told my husband that I'd had this memory come in like this repressed memory, but I, didn't really know what was going on yet. And I wasn't ready to talk about it, but just that it had kind of happened. Okay. Um, so once I kind of worked through it a little bit in therapy, I decided to share it with him. And then, and he, I mean, he was very, you, you know, supportive, but sharing it with another person and somebody that you, you're, you know, you're married to is like a whole nother level. Yeah. And then I start, you know, I was like, I never told anybody and I clearly, like, I just completely blacked it out. I left my body, but then I started thinking, well, did I tell anybody like what there's so much that's still missing. And part of the reason why I think too, I felt like I'd made it up is because so many of the significant details that most people remember when something like this happened, I didn't. I mean, when it first came in, I was like, I don't even remember how old I was. I think I was 14. So there's, there's still so many like holes and stuff that I started to wonder, did I tell anybody like Mm -hmm. just looking for little pieces of like the whole picture, I guess. 
You would think though, and I, I just want to say, you would think that if something this traumatic happened to you, that you would remember all the details, but majority of people I work with and myself don't remember any details at all. Like it is so hard for someone that's been, you know, sexually assaulted. Your sexuality is taken from you without yeah. you giving it away. And especially in a young age, it's like our minds are protecting us because those details could actually have killed us. Like if we remembered right. all those details, it would be hard to get out of bed. It would be hard yeah. to function in the world. So it's like, if you have like little memories and things you can't remember, give yourself a break. Like, you know, so I was just yeah. want to clarify that it's, it's not abnormal for you not to remember details. I told you, I can't, I can only remember the leaves and laying back mm -hmm. and like, that's mm -hmm. it. I can't remember anything else. And that's yeah. 12 years of working sex and love addiction right, right. therapy. Like I still can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I do still, um, I guess I still am sort of processing it just, I guess I think about it a lot. Do you think it affects your intimacy with your husband and that you also went out to like get that power back that was taken from you? Well, <laughs> that's definitely my history on like how I, when everything started. So that was the summer before I went to high school mm -hmm. and it was in high school when the money stuff got really bad. And when I started, you know, getting into sex and love addiction behaviors, um, and doing all kinds of crazy, awful things. So, so yeah, it's funny that you asked which came first. Cause I think that they both kind of came at the same time as a result of my trauma. Yeah. Which they usually do, you know, mm -hmm. your, your, your psyche reaches out in all directions to see what fits, what helps you not be in reality. So you can still function. Yeah. Well, I function as much as you can function, you know? Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm feeling so much sadness right now. I don't know why. <laughs> I think I'm like looking at you and seeing like that little girl that was taken advantage of. And then you, we go out and do all these horrible things and horrible things are done to us. And we're just trying to like heal. And it's yeah. just so difficult. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I think a lot about that too, like what, how different I would be or could be, you know, but that, that doesn't, that's not helpful. No. Um, it's just like reclaiming and rediscovering that little girl now. Yeah. There's few, like my mom, especially would say to me, like when we would argue and stuff in high school or college, she would say, when you were younger, like you were so compassionate and caring and kind. And then you got to high school and you were, you're cold and judgmental and cold is always the word that people used to describe me. Like people said, always thought I was cold. Mm -hmm. I was a bitch. I, you know, I didn't like anybody. People would meet me and be like, I thought you hated me. Um, oh my God. I feel so like you're talking to me because <laughs> in the book I told like Roxanne, everybody thinks she was a cold, hard bitch. Yes. That was me. That was me in high school because I was hurt. I was broken. So yeah. it was that mask on top of mask. Like don't mess uh -huh. with me. I will fuck you over before you fuck me over. Like that's yeah. the, my mentality. Yep. But then it goes, you know, it goes for so long that, I've, that it's like eventually, well, this is, who, this is my personality. This is who I am. Yeah. And once you get to know me, you'll see that like, that's not, and that's not really true. Like, I don't, you know, I'm a good friend and I'm funny and I'm whatever, but yeah, that's, that's just part of who I am. And so to now know what I know, do the work I'm doing, it's kind of crazy to think, oh, that all started at the same time. Yeah. And that you can now look at and give yourself a break that you were trying to survive. Like those were just coping mechanisms. That's not mm -hmm. really who you are at all. Right. You're, you're a great person that had horrible things done. So then you went in the world and tried to survive. And listen, anybody that's been through a hard time and on the other side, I think they're the best people in the world. So watching you heal and being a part of it in a very, very teeny small way, I'm just so grateful that you came on and were willing to say here, this is who I, what I did. And this is mm -hmm. why, and it doesn't make me a bad person. I am, and I'm writing my wrongs today. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's all I can do now. 
is be honest and open and rediscover that little girl and who I really am. Oh. Uh, just one more question. We've been talking forever, but <laughs> if anybody is struggling out there, if they have are having an emotional affair, if they've had trauma come up, what would be your advice for them right now? Like, especially, you know, during the holidays when people are like struggling. I think, I think the best thing that, that I can say is to talk to someone. I know that's a cliche, but honestly, I mean, if it's a therapist, if it's a friend, if it's a stranger, just like tell somebody what you're feeling or what you're going through, because it's like that first little step in the process is saying it. Yeah. And I think too, another thing that really helped me, especially with the trauma was just like writing because it helped me to kind of process for myself, what was going on and how I was feeling to kind of like separate it all because my head was just like, you know, chaos. Yeah. So I think that's what I would say. It's hard. Yeah, it is hard. And the thing I was, I would always say is don't be afraid of feelings. Yeah. Like we yeah, all true. don't want to feel feelings and feelings don't actually kill us while we're going through them. It feels like it is but it's actually healing whenever you so feel. True. So That's right. feel your feelings, good or bad. You can't, and if you try to block out the bad ones, you're actually blocking out the good ones too. You're never actually feeling fully of anything. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, that's a really good point. Learning that a bad feeling isn't a feeling that you have to change into a good feeling or you have to run away from or like mm -hmm. get away from as fast as possible, but that you just sit with it and yeah. you like, you like meet it almost as like, and like talk to it and like understand it. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. I feel all of them. Oh, uh, Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on again. I'm so grateful thank for you. you, honestly. I'm like on honored that you shared everything with us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for letting me. And if you want to be on the show, please email me at secretlifepodcast at iCloud.com. Until next time. Thanks again for listening to the show. Please subscribe, rate, share, or send me a note at secretlifepodcast.com. And if you like to check out my book, head over to secretlifenovel.com or Amazon to pick up a copy for yourself or someone you love. Thanks again. See you soon. With unlimited free delivery, a Walmart Plus membership helps with whatever life throws your way. And the holidays throw a lot. Like when you make a gift list, check it twice, but still forget someone. Or when you plan a dinner for four, but 14 show up. Or when you turn away for two seconds and your dog eats the turkey. Bad boy, Dino! Walmart Plus saves the holidays with unlimited free delivery on fresh groceries and more at everyday low prices. Start your free trial membership at walmartplus.com. $35 order minimum. Restrictions apply. See membership details. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty sizzling to perfection? It's time to cheer for Egg McMuffin and fresh cracked eggs at McDonald's. It's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest-to-goodness morning meal. Breakfast, it's on at McDonald's. Now get any breakfast sandwich for just 2 bucks. Available only through the app. Mobile order and pay available at participating McDonald's. McD app download and registration required.